This is my lovely cat Pepper. She's six years old. She's very funny and she likes eating. But more than eat, she likes to sleep. And as most of kids, she sleeps about 16 hours a day. Why? Why does she sleep so much? Maybe she knows a secret that says animals would die from lack of sleep before they die from starvation. I want to ask you, who of you sleep 10 hours a day? Maybe 8, 9, 10 hours or 6, 5 hours? Okay. As I thought, most of audience sleep just 6 just uh, six, five hours a day. And you know, it's uh, two hours less than it was a century ago. In our day, sleeping is sometimes seen as a disturbing factor that interrupts life. But why sleeping is so important? And what happens in our brain when we sleep? And why it's sometimes so hard to fall asleep? Now we are going to the magic world of sleeping. About 315 BC, Aristotle wrote his about sleep and sleeplessness. He tried to understand what exactly happened with us during sleeping and why. And during next more than 2000 years, no one answered this question. In 1924, Professor Hans Berger from Germany invented an electroencephalograph device for recording the electrical activity in the brain. So the investigation of sleeping moved from philosophy to science. But just in our days, thanks to the new technology and imaging devices, we are able to look more deeply to the inner activity of the brain. And maybe we are closer to the answer of the explicit question. Nobel Prize in uh, 2017 was awarded to three scientists for the discovery of molecular plot in the body cells, whose function is to synchronize us uh, with sun. And now we know that if this mechanism of synchronization is disturbed, then the risk of diabetes, cardiac disease, obesity, psychosis, or dementia increase. So what happens with, with us when we are diving into alternative surreal world of sleep. We go through six, four sleep cycles and of each of these cycles contains slow phases and rapid phase. And for each of these phases, there are precise features and goals. The first phase, slow phase, lasts about five minutes. Brain gets away from the waking life and gathers within itself. On EEG, irregular waves of wakefulness become more regular. Our sensory receptors are dim and we fall asleep. Phase two comes after it, straight from the depths of the brain with a series of electric sparks called spindles. These spindles weave through the cerebral cortex responsible for conscious and language. These spindles stimulate the cerebral cortex to, re to retain recently acquired information and stimulate and supposedly links this information to the knowledge that's already in the memory. Researchers think that phase two and sleeping at all makes connections that might not have been made without sleeping. That's why we don't say I'm going to eat with it. We say I'm going to sleep with it because at night, we move from recording to editing. The brain actively decides which memories to keep and which to delete. But the brain not always decides wisely and sometimes save unnecessary memory. That's why, for example, researchers recommend for soldiers returning from a difficult mission not lie down to sleep immediately, 
that stay awake for six, eight hours to prevent post-traumatic stress disorders. Sleeping just after important events, before our conscious mind was able to process the information, could lead to consolidation of the experience in the long-term memory. Phase two lasts about 15 minutes. Pulse slows down, temperature of body decreases, awareness of the external stimulus fades, and we are starting diving to stage three and four, the parts of sleeping. Every animal without exception sleeps, even if in a primitive way. Bat sleeps about 20 hours a day while hanging down. Giraffes sleep on their knees, turning the head around legs. Dolphins and migratory birds are able to sleep turning off only half of their brain. It allows them to keep swimming or flying during sleep. A kind of sleep also exists among organisms who have no brain at all. Jellyfish, plankton, eats. All of them have a clear cycles of activity and rest. This implies that sleeping is an ancient mechanism whose original and universal function is not an organization of memories or assistance to learning, but connection to the very existence of life. It's no doubt that there is a law of nature that determines no one, no any single creature, big or small, can manage activity 24 hours a day. You must compete with other organisms to survive, and therefore you need a period of rest to recover. In human, the recovery takes place mainly in the deep phases of sleep, phases three and four, which differ from each other in the number of so-called delta waves and big waves of EG. These deep phases of sleep help us to maintain the immune system, temperature and blood pressure, mood, bones and muscles through secretion of growth hormone, and lead to recovery of the body and mind. Our muscles are relaxed and brain activity is minimal. These phases last about 30 minutes and after that we return to phase 2 for a short period of time and here comes perhaps the most mysterious part of sleeping, rapid eyes movement phase. This phase is so different from others that some physiologists identify it as a distinct behavioral state. We see dreams. Our muscles are paralyzed, our eyes run, run behind the eyelids as if we see, and tiny muscles in the inner ear move as if we hear. Inner ear also responsible for moving. That's why in a dream we can fly or fall. Dreams have always been associated with magic, messages from the heaven, mystery of subconscious. Sigmund Freud said that dreams reflect our subconscious desires and repressed emotions. In our days, some researchers are not interested in the content of our dreams. They believe that dreams arise from the chaotic impulses of nerve cells and have no meaning. Only after we wake up, the conscious brain may seek the meaning. Other researchers hold the completely opposite position. Content of dream, they say, is a part of evolutionary mechanism for a broader view and understanding of new memories and for their benefit for the future, even if we don't remember our dreams. Otherwise, the dreams prove that the brain is able to operate independently without sensory input and conduct their own experiments as much as it can. Thomas Edison lived 100 years ago and obviously didn't know anything that we know now about sleep. He said sleeping is a ridiculous thing and bad habit. We had to get rid of sleep and invented electrical light bulb. Our life is up. We stay awake until late in illuminated cities. We sit in front of computer screen or watch TV. We read illuminated books or look at smartphones. And we don't even think that light, especially blue light, 
disturbs our inner mechanism of molecular clock and synchronization with sun, and that's why it delays sleeping. Many of us see sleeping as an enemy that interrupts our life, our working, shopping, sporting, or parenting. We have no time to sleep. In Israel, in a survey that was conducted by the Ministry of Health in 2016 among more than 3,000 adult men and women, found that they sleep about six and a half hours on average, and it's not much different from other countries. Modern life is a life of lack of sleep. Lack of sleep disrupts the function of all body systems and increases risk of depression, cardiovascular disorders, obesity, leads to chronic fatigue, and fatigue in its turn leads to vehicle accidents, medical errors, or in some cases, even to forced confessions to crimes during sleep deprivation. What a terrible picture. But these were uh, bad news. And the good news are that now, after our short trip to a magic world of sleeping, now we know why it's so important to sleep and sleep enough time. And probably we are asking a wrong question since the days of Aristotle. The real question should not be why we are sleeping, but why we are still awake. Thank you.